The Golden State Warriors have only a month left before the preseason kicks off, and the journey to defend their title begins. However, a common theme throughout the 2022 offseason is the lack of recognition for potentially the all-time greatest player that Stephen Curry is and the perfectly suited system around him. We've broken down and reversed narratives revolving around Steph, but we haven't fully exposed every terrible take from the mainstream media. While last summer, I broke down how the Warriors dynasty could resume with this video, talking heads one after the other were claiming the dubs were done for. We've exposed many bad takes, but the list of mainstream nationally televised haters who doubted the Warriors is endless. The fools you're about to see made confidently wrong takes about the Warriors, so buckle up for some tough to endure hot takes, and then for my personal opinion on whether the legacy of the dub's best player gets the full respect it deserves not just from my channel but across the internet and in the mainstream media, and what's the next bit of motivation that Curry and the dubs will have to use as fuel to their fire. Before that, just 8.8% .8 of you watching right now are subscribed, so please subscribe, leave a thumbs up on this video for more uploads like it, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference, and trust me, for highlights and updates on the NBA you need to see, click the link in the description and go follow at dflowhoops on Instagram and Twitter. Sports Illustrated just came out with an article revolving around the trade proposal of Andrew Wiggins in exchange for former Golden State Warrior and champion with the dubs, now Sacramento King. Harrison Barnes, along with Kevin Herter, and a future top 10 protected first round pick. While that move would save the Warriors some cap space, that proposal from one of the most trusted news sources speaks to how criminally underrated Air Canada truly is. This man was the second option next to Stephen Curry in the NBA Finals in terms of two-way impact on the wing, scoring and locking up opposing team's top players. Whether it was Luka Doncic, Jason Tatum, DeLon Brooks, or Aaron Gordon, Wiggins clamped up the opposing team's top player in every series throughout the Warriors' 2022 title run. Once the playoffs hit, Wiggs emphatically stepped up his production from the regular season like a true all-star starter would do. While Klay Thompson was statistically the Warriors' second leading scorer throughout the 2022 playoffs, he struggled mightily come the NBA Finals as Thompson shot just 35% from the field and from deep. Filling in without hesitation, Wiggs adequately stepped up to be Curry's Robin on the biggest stage of them all. The reason people saying Wiggins should be traded in exchange for former Golden State Warrior Harrison Barnes is absolutely egregious is because Barnes never came close to what Wiggins did come the NBA Finals in terms of bucket getting, and Harrison's also never been quite as impactful defensively as Wiggins either, as solid as the now 30-year-old is on that end of the court. In terms of scoring, that's where respectfully to Harrison, it's not even close between he and Andrew, especially when it comes down to what they did in the NBA Finals. Wiggins was second on the Warriors in scoring throughout 2022's Finals, averaging 18.3 points per game, never failing to reach double digits in points over a six-game tilt against Boston. Consistently taking the pressure off Curry was something Harrison was never tasked with or came close to doing, given Barnes averaged under 9.5 points per night both in 2015 and in 2016's NBA Finals against Cleveland before the former Warrior moved on to Dallas, with Kevin Durant joining the Dubs in 2016 summer. Harrison was always decent and doesn't deserve to be shamed in this comparison with Andrew, but really, it's the writer of this piece suggesting such a ridiculous trade in Joey Lynn who deserves the flack for not properly evaluating the impact of Maple Jordan. When you work at a company as reputable as Sports Illustrated, journalists like Joey have to be a lot better. Speaking of having to do better, the folks who not merely picked against the dubs in 2022's finals, but spoke on their name disrespectfully, are on full display if Curry ever wins another okay. championship in Golden State, it will not resemble the same team, and it's going to be years from now. They, the dynasty is over. Was he the best player on the team? No, Ke Kevin Durant was. I, but clearly, KD was better than Steph. He wouldn't have won two of them if it wasn't for Durant. The Warriors dynasty over. Yes. I don't see the Golden State Warriors bringing home another championship. Y'all go sit on first take. You and Dominique Foxworth and say that Steph Curry will not be in the conversation for a championship in the yeah. next four years. Yeah. 
It's over for them now. We will never see Steph in another NBA Finals, ever. They have no path forward. Biggins is horrifying. And that'll do it. It's over. The Golden State Warriors return to a familiar place. They're on top of the NBA world. The fourth title in eight years. The Dubs dynasty is still very much alive. Before that clip, we broke down the disregard of two-way wigs whose lockdown defense and all-around composure when the dubs needed it most could be heavily broken down in the film room during another video. But I want to talk about why Golden State's Batman Stephen Curry is still somehow underrated in discussions based around the greatest player to ever lace him up. Steph's rival CJ McCollum's mainstream opinion that Durant carried the Warriors in his time in the Bay Area is heavily exposed by the fact that Curry was 32-4 and when Durant didn't play, a 56-win pace, while Durant was 28-18 and when Curry didn't play, a 49-win pace. Boston was a generationally great defensive team in 2022, proven by versatile Celtic big men like Grant Williams and Al Horford, switching onto and making life miserable for Kevin Durant in the first round of the playoffs. Boston handedly swept the talented Nets core of Kyrie and KD, Three rounds later, as the Celtics were looking increasingly intimidating, Steph had no fear whatsoever and used his off-ball gravity, balanced shooting off the dribble, and increased strength to utterly manipulate an intense and desperate Boston defense who had lengthy athletic wings in Tatum and Brown who looked impossible to score on before Steph took full advantage of his opportunity to shut everyone up. Curry pulled off a Leon Edwards headshot dead type knockout on the seemingly untouchable Celtics. As I've said in prior videos, despite owning the same amount of rings as LeBron James and being robbed of potentially several finals MVPs, one of which was taken from him by Andre Iguodala, a very low percentage of fans consider Curry to have even close to the type of legacy to LBJ. You can see why fans hate Steph so much when Damian Lillard's Blazers are 0-10 against Curry in the playoffs, it's also not hard to believe Curry's not properly rated when you realize the man's record when facing the toughest superstars in the modern era. Steph's 15-7 against LeBron in playoff games, 14-6 against Harden, 7-1 against Anthony Davis, and as I just touched on, 10-0 against Damian Lillard. Those are players with massive fan bases who've gotten used to taking L's against the NBA's greatest three-point shooter of all time. Maybe there's another all-time conversation we should be having, though. Instead, people like Maverick Carter are saying things like this, quote, The world knows Stephen Curry can't play defense. I'm 38 and haven't played a decent game of basketball in 18 years, and Steph would have trouble guarding me, end quote. I'm not sure why that statement was made in the first place, considering Curry was the steals per game leader in 2016, but Steph responded to that take from Carter by putting on 10 to 20 pounds of muscle in the offseason, and increasing his balance as well, which allowed Steph to rank 7th among point guards just behind DeJounte Murray in defensive rating throughout 2021, and this past season, ranked number 4 among all point guards in defensive efficiency, just behind the Defensive Player of the Year, Marcus Smart. You probably heard that last stat in prior videos of mine covering the champs. What I haven't mentioned is that Steph leads any potential greatest of all time candidate in this stat. Between the conference and NBA Finals, Curry's averaged at least 30 points per game on 60% shooting five different times, LeBron's only done it three times, MJ and Kobe have only done it twice, and most notably, Kevin Durant's only done it twice as well. Maybe fans and media should give more credibility to all the space Curry creates for himself and his teammates, while Durant's flashy point per game averages in 2017 and 2018's finals make him a champion that should be respected. That should never take away from what the most important player to the Golden State Warriors dynasty by far has accomplished. If you don't believe my perspective as an unbiased Raptor fan, just take these clips from the Warriors head coach Steve Kerr. You know, whenever I'm done coaching, um, I will look back and just say thank you to Steph, you know, night after night. That guy Curry, wherever he is, there he is right there. Go talk to him. He's the reason for all this. A lot of people had a big hand in this, but I think the thing with, with Steph is... Um, you know, w without him, none of this happens, you know. That shouldn't take anything away from what Draymond Green does. While Steph's record without Green is much better than Dre's record without Steph, 
Dre is still this team's vocal, defensive, passing, and screen-setting backbone. Draymond was one of three players in 21-22 season next to Giannis and LeBron to average at least 5 points, 5 assists, 5 rebounds, 1 steal, and 1 block per game. But as good as Draymond is, these upcoming numbers from Curry display he's the captain of the ship by far. Steph has the most clutch baskets in the last 10 playoffs with 62 just ahead of LeBron's 59, KD's 54, and Kawhi's 49. Also, Steph Curry's 32.5 career point per game average in title clinchers is second all time, only trailing Michael Jordan. So why doesn't Stephen Curry get LeBron James love in your opinion? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out, and the top 5 commenters by September 21st earn free merchandise of their choosing. Last video I asked, who's your player comparison for Patrick Williams? Today's speaks winner is Hamish H who says Draymond Green's playing style is similar. They both can guard multiple positions and rebound well for their size. Both are also willing to do the dirty work on the court, which other stars aren't willing to do. The final is their basketball IQ and their abilities to space the floor. Appreciate every answer. You tell the story and Community Speaks, so leave your take on today's question.